Ningbo the design of the museum in Ningbo has a lot to do with its environment. It lies directly in the center of the new city district. And directly next to it is the government building. There was a master plan for this area. It's called Little Manhattan. It attempts to imitate the city structure of New York. That's why a historical museum was planned there. But how do you do that? My concept was to consciously create a contrast to this dominance of the high-rises. My focus was more on landscape and nature, and that's why I kept the buildings very low. Normally, one would tend toward shiny materials like glass and metal, but I consciously avoided reflecting materials and built a very dark building instead. I think this suits my approach and understanding of Chinese tradition. My idea was to use primarily reclaimed building materials. Back then, the supervising civil servants were completely incensed. They couldn't understand the concept at all. Because the new city was meant to look like a small version of Manhattan, all modernism and future. They asked me why I wanted to use old and dirty materials for a new museum. What did it mean? I explained that the museum should not only be there to house historic cultural artifacts, but also to be a reminder of times past and of tradition. I think that for people's lives it is important to live in harmony with history and tradition. For example, on TV you often see a scene in which someone has lost their memory. After that, everything is terrible. Their whole life is turned upside down. If you look at Chinese cities, you see that almost all of our cities have lost their memory. It's a terrible situation. And that's why we talk about history and tradition. They are an essential element in our daily lives. Chinese tradition is alive. That is not an abstract statement. When you take a building apart, in a house dating back to the Qing dynasty, you might find a tile from the Tang dynasty. And in that, we see that history continues to add layers. That is life.